Section 8.5, Drawing Lewis Structures. So a Lewis structure is more than just a Lewis uh, electron dot um, picture, but it's actually a molecule. It's, it's using the, the Lewis dot uh, for each atom in a molecule, showing you where the bonds are, and also showing you where the non-bonding electron pairs are. So in the case of HH, so there are one electron from the hydrogen, one electron from the hydrogen. So when you form a bond, all the hydrogen electrons are gone in both cases. And but the, both of these count for both hydrogens. So the hydrogen needs a octet, which it only has two in it, like equal to helium. And so two electrons are equal to helium. And so both of those are very stable. So this has the octet rule met. This one has it met too. Chlorine has seven in its outer shell. So here's six dots, and there's one, and there's one. So here's seven, each of them are bringing one. So this line is representing a pair. And so that means that you've got two, four, six, eight, and then two, four, six, eight. So the shared electrons are counting for both groups. When you're writing Lewis structures, you have to kind of do it the same way. Otherwise, you're going to forget a lot of stuff. So there's a, there's a procedure that you go through. First thing is you need to know how many total electrons you've got. You need to know how many you play with so that you then distribute them, um, doing the stuff you have to have, and then you'll know whatever's left over uh, forces you to know what the structure actually is. So if you have this, this molecule where you have phosphorus and three chlorides, how many electrons is that? Well, phosphorus is in group five. That means there's five valence electrons. You're counting valence electrons here. So then seven times three, because you have three chlorines, and seven is the valence for chlorine. So that's a total of 26. So you have to use 26. You can't use more than 26, and you can't use less. All right, so now we've got... Um, we need to know what the central atom is. So the central atom, if you have PCl3, the central atom's normally given first in the structure, so in the formula. So P will be the one that, and obviously, you've got three, one different and three alike. Most likely, the P will be the center, but the rule of thumb is the the formula will kind of tell you what's first. So the phosphorus is first, it's central. Three chlorines are attaching to the phosphorus. All right, so there's 26 total. I have to have three bonds, this is two each. So that's two, this is two, this is two. So I'm subtracting six from 26 and I have 20 left to play with. Now I need to fill the octets uh, for all the outer atoms, not the central one, but for the outer atoms. So I have two, four, six, eight. So this is so I need to fill the others. So I've got two, four, six, and then another six on the bottom and another six on the left. That's eighteen. I had twenty, so twenty minus eighteen is two. So now I've got two more electrons to play with. I've done all the outside ones. Now I have to play with the phosphorus. It goes on the phosphorus, and now you check to see if you have octets met. Okay, so I've got octets for the chlorines, chlorines, chlorines. How about the octet for the phosphorus? Two, four, six, eight. There's an octet on the phosphorus. So this is the most likely structure of the, the, the PCL3 molecule. Now, if I run out of electrons before the central atom has an octet, so if I use all my electrons up and I still, like in this case, only have two bonds and I need four, well, it's possible to trade in electron pairs for a bond because remember a bond is two electrons. So I use that with an arrow. I use this arrow down. So that bond is now, those are the, that non-bonding electron pair is now going to count as a bond. So when I put a bond here, now I've got two, four, six, eight, 
four, six. I need another one. So this one's going to come here. And there's eight. So there's eight around carbon. And I still have my nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen would be two, four, six, eight. Okay, carbon then would have two, four, six, eight. So it would count both. So if you run out of electrons before you get to the central atom octet met, you probably have a double bond or a triple bond. Now, formal charges are not real. They are simply just bookkeeping. It's just a tallying of, of uh, electrons. And they're useful whenever you have more than one Lewis structure that looks like it's possible. So if you can draw a compound in more than one way with Lewis structures, then you choose between the different options with something called formal charges. Okay, so uh, let me read this. For each atom, count the electrons in the lone pairs, okay, and then half of the electrons it shares with, with the other atom. That is called a formal charge then subtract it from the number of valence electrons in that atom. As the closer you can get to zeros for everything, the more likely is that that is the Lewis structure that you should choose. So for instance, if you were to have carbon dioxide, CO2, um, I would say there's no, let's look at the carbon first. Let's look at this one. There's no non-bonding uh, electrons, so I have zero, and then I have half of these guys, so there's one, two, half of these guys, three, four, so I have four, and valence electron for carbon is four, so four minus four is zero, so carbon has a zero for a formal charge. Let's try the, the oxygen. The oxygen has one, two, three, four, and then half of the double bond, five, six, it has six electrons. Subtract that from the valence, valence electrons. There's six, because it's in group six. Six minus six is zero, and we have a zero here. Now, the other possibility of a Lewis structure that actually looks like it works, because everything is, everything is there, would have a zero for carbon, a positive one for one oxygen, and a negative one for the other oxygen. Um, this is, if you have the choice between, now they'll both add up to zero because negative one plus one plus zero is zero and zero and zero and zero is zero. But this being closer to the valence electrons is most likely going to be the, the one you would choose. So if you were ever have the rare occasion that you would have more than one Lewis structure, you employ, employ formal charges in order to figure out which one is actually the, the, the right one. Okay, and it's the one with the fewest charges would be the right one, or the one that puts a negative charge on the most electronegative atom. Okay, so in this case, uh, the the negative charge would be on the net on the oxygen, and so it would be the most likely, and so you can choose well.